Hey everyone, what's up and welcome to another weekly news roundup where we bring you up to date with what's happening in the WoW PvP scene. To kick things off, we have some big news on the upcoming classic expansion, The Burning Crusade. There has been a leak on the release date for Classic TBC on a forum post. There is a chance that this might be wrong, but many trusted sources already confirmed it and it would definitely make sense with previous assumptions. According to this leak, the TBC beta will start in mid-February, and the actual release date is marked to be the 4th. Once again, a global release event with the pre-patch starting on the 13th for NA and 14th for EU already. We expect an official announcement for Classic TBC at BlizzCon, which will be held in an online format on the 19th of February. They will probably give us a release date for TBC, plus the start of the official beta to create a lot of hype around the game. We are super excited and we can't wait for TBC Arenas. What do you think of TBC and will you be playing it? Let us know in the comments down below if you will and if you're interested in seeing Skillcapped produce content for it. For now though, let's hop back onto retail and have a look at what's going on in the WoW Arena esports scene. We have spotted two new big team announcements for the upcoming Arena World Championship, starting with its first qualifier match on the 13th of January. Waz, the most recent BlizzCon champion and one of the best rogues in the game along with his teammate Chaz, one of the most versatile healers who's mastered every spec, have created a new team with Zuniaki and Thesia, replacing Swapsy and Raikou due to their indefinite suspensions. Zuniaki, who has recently been known for his appearances as a Disc Priest in the AWC, will now surprisingly be making a return to the DPS role, playing as a Shadow Priest and Rep Paladin for the team. We've seen Zuniaki perform at the highest level before on a DPS, making it to the BlizzCon Final in 2014 as skill-capped EU. So we've definitely got high expectations for him in the 2021 season. And their fourth member, Thesia, is highly regarded as a phenomenal mage, making this team super scary and easily one of the top contenders to win the next AWC. The next top team announcement and probably the biggest rival to this new powerhouse team will be the former members of Wildcard Gaming, who will be representing a new org. This team pretty much stayed the same at their core, consisting of Zpi, Blizzo, and Maro. All of these three are top players that proved themselves many times over the last couple of years and finally won the AWC last year in Europe. However, their big change is the replacement of an all-time great, the 2014 BlizzCon champion, Looney due to a one-year suspension. In his place, Asgarth has come in as the 2016 BlizzCon champion and is easily one of the top healers in EU, mostly known for his highly skilled Resto Druid plays, but also for being incredibly versatile and able to play multiple healers. This is definitely a super scary team as, again, this roster won the last Arena World Championship. There's definitely going to be high pressure on Asgarth to fill in Looney's shoes. But we have no doubt that this will be a year of two Goliaths competing against one another for the title. So, will we once again see RMP on top? Or will something else like Ellie Mage take the crown again? Overall, there's a lot on the line for these teams, and it will be super exciting to see who's going to come out on top. Next up, the season has been live for a few weeks now, and we've started to see the meta develop. Let's take a look at which 3v3 comps are performing the best. There are plenty of viable comps, but let's list a few of the top performing archetypes, starting off with RMP still taking their throne as one of the best comps in the game, despite the recent nerfs to Subrogue. The main reason for why RMP is currently one of the best comps is due to the strength of Fire Mages. They bring the most reliant and over-the-top single target burst with combustion, and on top of that, they bring monster mobility and spammable CC in the form of their Dragon's Breath, Polymorph, and Novas which are made even more potent thanks to the recent shift to mages using the Night Fae as their covenant and picking up the Soulbind, Soothing Voice. They are also extremely durable due to the legendary Triune Ward barrier, giving them all three mage barriers at once. Subrogue is then the perfect addition, setting up goes with a kidney on the enemy healer so the mage can safely sheep or ring off, giving them enough time to take down an enemy DPS while the enemy healer is crowd controlled endlessly. The other type of comp that we're going to look at is Shadow Priest Warrior Healer, either a Resto Shaman or Holy Paladin. This is a super durable comp and a great answer to RMP, along with plenty of other comps on the ladder. This comp brings a ton of survivability, being super hard to kill due to having fear, mind control, and life swap from the priest. Warriors being super tanky and even more annoying saving their teammates with Intervene, making them basically unkillable for 6 seconds 
and to round out all their defensive plays, they bring absurd consistent pressure and offensive plays with an instant stun and a silence from the Shadow Priest. Last up, our final type of comp must go to Windwalker Enhance and Warrior Enhance, also known as Turbo. Preferably played with a Holy Paladin or Disc Priest, this comp brings insane unhealable burst damage as the legendary effect of Enhancement Shaman's Doom Winds is super broken right now dealing absurd damage. As Warriors are being one of the best melee in the game right now, they bring tons of damage and utility, making their team able to survive for a long time, giving them more time and ultimately more chances to one-shot someone with Bloodlust and Doom Winds. But as we already said, these are only three of the current top performing comps. There's a ton of viable ones, with the strongest revolving around the somewhat broken Fire Mage spec when paired with a Holy Paladin. These are Ellie, Fire, H Pala, Shatter, and Windwalker Mage, H Pala. Alongside those, we've also seen a couple of others that stand out, including a handful of Ret comps, such as Ret Warrior, and a few Ellie comps, such as Ellie Shadow Priest. We'll have our 3v3 tier list out in a couple of weeks, so keep an eye out for that to learn about what all the other top comps are and how they work. Now, let's have a look at how the new gearing system has panned out so far. Players have recently been complaining that there's a relatively huge problem with the new Shadowlands PvP gearing system. As of right now, as a PvPer, you can basically only get to an item level just above 200 on average. A lot of Mythic Raiders are already a lot higher, giving them a big advantage due to the fact that there is no more PvP scaling, which was removed with the pre-patch of Shadowlands. As a PvP-only player, we are basically time-gated to our weekly chest that drops one best-in-slot item each week. Another problem is that the conquest gap is way too low, capped at 500 for each week, leaving us with only one conquest item every two weeks on average. All this leaves us in a weird scenario where PvE rewards will give you a temporary advantage, leaving many PvP players frustrated because this either means you do PvE to be competitive or just cap your characters and leave it for the week to get the weekly upgrade from the vault till you get to the same item level as you would if you did do PvE content. The gearing is definitely still better than BFA, as we can actually get BIS gear from PvP this time very reliably. A quick solution would be to increase this weekly conquest cap by 300 so you would be able to get at least one item from the vendor each week. Combining that with the weekly vault would leave us with two powerful items a week, which would be great. Another problem that players have recently had to deal with is the ridiculous amount of honor needed to upgrade conquest gear, especially weapons which players save up for two-handed ones could finally buy this week. Those who purchased a two-handed weapon directly from conquest for 1800 of that currency need to spend almost 30,000 honor to upgrade their weapon all the way to 233. Needless to say, this is a ridiculous amount of honor that players are expected to farm in order to rank up their gear, especially when you consider we're only a couple of weeks away from the Renown 22, which will allow players to upgrade their honor gear one more time, something that you'll once again need to farm plenty of honor for. Last up, we have some quick news on the race to world first. We have finally a winner between Complexity Limit and Echo, and surprise surprise, Limit came out on top. The race was extremely close though, with Echo just being a couple percentages behind, but Limit showed dedication and focus, taking down Sire Denathrius first, just one day before Christmas. Definitely a well-deserved win by Complexity Limit, but it would be interesting if we could get a worldwide raid release so we could see all guilds racing at the same time for the throne in the next tier. Echo ended up grabbing their kill less than 16 hours after Limit's kill, and given the time disparity between the NA and EU weekly reset, it's hard to say who would have actually won this race if it was fair. Regardless, this race to world first was one of the most exciting ones so far, and hopefully we'll get more guilds who can actually compete in the next tier. Alright then, thank you for tuning in, that's all for this week of news. Be sure to like the video, hit subscribe, and let us know in the comments if you're enjoying the expansion so far. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.